Hello and welcome to This Week in Destiny for the week commencing November 22nd, 2022. This week's featured Nightfall will be the Lightblade over on the Throne World, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 100k or more. This Nightfall will require you to own the Witch Queen expansion of Destiny 2 in order to be able to play it. You will be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, and ascendant shards. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 8 Barrier Champions, 2 Unstoppable, and 7 Lucent Hive Sentinels, with 6 Solar and 12 Arc Shields. Master and GMs will have 12 Barrier, 3 Unstoppable, and 7 Lucent Hive Sentinels, with 6 Solar and 8 Arc Shields. Your Grand Master modifiers will be Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, which cannot be stopped without the correct mods equipped, Fire Pit, when defeated, Acolytes spawn fireballs that cause damage over time. Chafe, radar is disabled. Empath, take increased damage from melee. And your Grandmaster modifiers are Contest, Join in Progress disabled, Lock loadouts, Match Game, and Extra Shields. Match Game is enemy shields are highly resistant to all unmatched elemental damage. Equipment locked, you will not be able to change your equipment after this activity starts. Attrition, regeneration is greatly impaired, defeating enemies may create wells of light. Extinguish, if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, everyone is returned to orbit. Limited fire team revives, and you gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. Champions mob, this mode contains additional champions. An acute arc burn, 50% extra incoming arc and environmental damage is increased, but 25% bonus arc damage is dealt to enemies. The power requirement this season to enter the GMs are 1595 light, which is also what your power is capped at, and the enemy power will be 1620. Your anti-champion artifact mods for this week are Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle and Scout for 1 energy, and further over we have Sniper for 6. Unstoppables are Pulse for 1 energy, and Shotguns for 3. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. So for anti-barrier, we have the Kinetic Bow, Wishender, the Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle, Arbalest, the Solar Energy Hand Cannon, Ariana's Vow, the Solar Heavy Sword, the Lament, and the Titan Exotic Gauntlets, Second Chance, which gain a second charge of your shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. For unstoppable, we have the Kinetic Fusion Rifle, Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon, Malfeasance. The Solar Energy Sidearm, Devil's Ruin. The Void Heavy Bow, Leviathan's Breath. And the Hunter Gauntlets, Athras Embrace, which have a chance to stun unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The featured weapon to obtain next week should be the Solar Aggressive Frame Shotgun, Mindbender's Ambition. But it could be the Arc Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle, Horrors Least, as these two weapons had to be swapped out the last time this was the Nightfall. The Mindbender's Ambition is an aggressive frame kinetic shotgun with a base impact of 80, base range and stability of 29. It can roll with swashbuckler, one-two punch, well-rounded and incandescent, with auto-loading holster, pugilist, snapshot sights and threat detector. Horrors Least is a rapid fire frame arc pulse rifle with a base impact of 23, base range of 34 and stability of 49. It can roll with kill clip, vorpal, and Frenzy, with Zen Moment, Under Pressure, and Heating Up. Both weapons have the origin trait of Stunning Recovery, where if you stun a champion, you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen, and improve your recovery for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health. Next up, Lord Shax brings Rift back to the Crucible this week, for the second time this season. <laughs> Rift is a 6v6 game mode that focuses heavily on objective based gameplay and not just killing the enemy team. Instead of accruing points based on defeating enemies, players can score points by picking up the spark and dunking it into their opponent's rift which is near the enemy's spawn. A team can either win by scoring 5 points before the opposing team can, by scoring 3 points without the enemy team getting a look in, 
or have more points when the time runs out. The spark spawns in the centre of the map and starts charging after 6 seconds of the round starting and becomes visible for all players on the map. After another 12 to 13 seconds the spark is available for players to pick up, giving both teams approximately 20 seconds to fight over the spark before either side can pick it up. For 5 seconds after a player picks up the spark, they become marked on both teams maps. After that, they are only marked on their own team's map unless they are in view of the enemy team. The carry can only hold on to the spark for a minute and 15 seconds. After that, the spark detonates, killing the carrier and those around them before resetting. Should the carrier die in any way that isn't from the spark detonating, the spark drops at that location. If a player picks up the spark whilst they're in their super, they are immediately pulled out of their super. Furthermore, they will not gain any more super energy whilst holding the spark and will be unable to use their super even if it's fully charged. If a player dies, they must wait 10 seconds before they respawn, but their teammates can revive them during this time. This forces the players to focus on teamwork to help push up on their enemies, but can also leave some players out of the game for an extended duration if their team cannot or won't revive them. And hold those zones, Guardians, with Crucible Lab Zone Control, which is where you can enjoy increased Crucible reputation for the rest of the season. Zone Control is an objective-based variant of control, which emphasizes in teams collaborating more actively and defending zones. Capturing zones solo will dramatically take longer, taking 22.5 seconds to capture a zone, whereas two can capture within 10 seconds, and three or more players will capture a zone in 7.5. Capturing zones is the only way to score points, with each zone netting the team one point per zone and holding onto them will reward two points every 15 seconds, making it essential to lock down areas rather than float between them carelessly. The first team to 125 points wins. And you can enjoy bonus trials ranks at the weekend. The freelance playlist returns for solo players with capture zones as the game mode. Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 PvP high stakes variant of elimination. Only available during the weekends, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armour. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage, a ticket purchased from Saint-14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials will grant exclusive weapons, armour, pinnacle gear, masterwork material and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse, with a flawless ticket of 7 games won with no losses. In Capture Zone Trials, you can either win by eliminating all opposing players, or play tactically and capture the zone to win the round. Five round wins will bag you that match for your passage card. By competing in Trials, you do have a chance to pick up two Pinnacle Engrams from playing each week. One for 50 round wins, and the other for winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. Destiny 2 contains a number of raids and dungeons which are end game activities. These are tuned to test guardians in skill and puzzle solving. Raids are 6 player activities whilst dungeons are 3. The current season's main raid is the Reprise King's Fall and the current dungeon is Duality. These will drop pinnacle rewards for the first time you complete them each week for each character run through, resetting at the weekly reset. In addition to this, one older dungeon and raid will be featured each week with a pinnacle reward on defeating the final boss, so feel free to join a friend or team if they have a checkpoint. The pinnacle will only drop once, but you can also farm the featured dungeon and raid for legendary equipment specific to those locations, including the exotic weapon from the featured raid. The pinnacle dungeon for next week will be the Pit of Heresy on the moon, and your pinnacle raid will be the Vault of Glass in the Legend tab where you will be able to farm the exotic fusion rifle, Vex Mythoclass. Next up, challenges. We have now had all 78 challenges over the period of the last 10 weeks. So as a reminder, if you complete 75 out of the 78 available for this season, you can get a large pile of bright dust to spend at the Eververse store in game. And speaking of bright dust, let's move on to our Eververse store for the week of November 22nd, 2022. Available this week for Bright Dust, we have the Grasping Thoughts Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust, the Aokai Fass SL65 Exotic Ship for 2,000 Bright Dust, 
The Daito Capsule Entrance Legendary Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust. The Polished Sea Stone Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust. The Swab the Deck Exotic Emote for 3250 Bright Dust. The No Signal Legendary Emote for 700 Bright Dust. The Motive Force Exotic Sparrow for 2500 Bright Dust. The Heliotropic Exotic Ship for 2000 Bright Dust. The Eternal Vengeance Cask for the Hunters. The Nightly Noir Helm for the Titans. And the Painted Kits and Hood for the Warlocks, each for 1200 Bright Dust. The End of an Era Exotic Weapon Ornament for the Last Word Hand Cannon will be available for 1250 Bright Dust. And rounding out the Bright Dust offerings in the Eververse store will be the Lantern Ghost Projection for 1,500 Bright Dust. And then finally, the Lost Sector rotation for this week. Hello. 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 As a reminder, your daily Lost Sector will show a flag outside which will give you details of champions and burns you will find inside. But if you are new to the game or you are using an alternative character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Tuesday, November 22nd will be the Conflux on Nessus for exotic gauntlets, Void Elemental Shields with a solar burn with Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Wednesday, November 23rd will be the K1 Crew Quarters on the Moon for exotic chests, Solar Elemental Shields and an Arc Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Thursday, November 24th will be the K1 Logistics on the Moon for Exotic Helmets, Solar and Arc Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Friday, November 25th will be the K1 Communion on the Moon for Exotic Boots, Solar and Void Elemental Shields with a Solar Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Saturday, November 26th will be the Skydock 4 over on the EDZ for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Elemental Shields with a Solar Burn, with Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Sunday, November 27th will be the Scavenger's Den on the EDZ for Exotic Chess, Arc Elemental Shields, Solar Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. And finally, background to Monday, November 28th will be the Quarry on the EDZ for Exotic Helmets, Solar and Void Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. And that's it for your This Week in Destiny starting on November 22nd, 2022. A big thank you to Kyber's Corner for the Nightfall information, to Dane Destiny for the Eververse and Lost Sector information, and Light.gg for the challenges. You will find all the links in the description below. A like and a follow would be appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>